This is the Silt versus Drowned Revelations part five. So we'll do a quick recap, um, catch up on a few housekeeping items, uh, rewards and such, and um, we'll introduce a new assignment here. So last session, um, our custodians uh, resolved the uh, Young Jolly Junk assignment and are still um, started investigating the Boward Companion, which is this um, sort of god of, of lost travelers who seems to be luring them off of the road um, in the town, near the town of Alm, which is uh, causing big disruptions to a really important trade route. And Bastion Dyer has gone alone to investigate that and quickly encountered a saint. Um, very appropriate for the Cairn Maiden to be walking alone and um, being spooky as ever in this mist um, region. So Bastion's on his own. Um, Merryweather has been making connections with the Skelton family, which is this family out in um, the rural town of Weft, where they're kind of under the protection of the Dusk Mother, this um, sort of angel um, that uh, they're kind of under its thrall and very isolated, becoming very feral, but she has befriended them and um, has answered the first question of uh, finding where the Dusk Mother's nest is, which it turns out is underground. And Zeph Harrow has also been catching up, um, had had a series of, of interesting encounters and is now kind of on the way back into town um, with a local hunter. And then both of those characters started to encounter a lot of strangeness in the woods. The trees were very wrong. You found a sort of abandoned lumber mill. Um, strange muscle-like tissue and growths in the trees, and also the presence of this uh, fungal devouring god called Writhes be Beneath the Loam. And I'm going to introduce a new assignment. Um, John, do you have any thoughts or, or any detail you want to add to Dr. Quick? Um, he kind of wrapped up the floating market. We can just jump into a journey scene with him, and that's totally fine but I don't know if you had any thoughts about um, what he's been doing in the meantime. Um, I, I, I'm not sure. Really. I, I'm really happy yeah. just to jump into him on the road, maybe cool. getting the, the next assignment. Okay, great. Um, before I even introduce that, let's just catch up on things that I have been forgetting. So the end of um, the floating market, um, if you look in that tab, there are still rewards. Um, the other custodians chose theirs, but we didn't pick one for Dr. Quick. So let's see, it's at the very bottom, or there's that rewards tab. If you click on that, it will jump you right to that. It might be questionable to have a specific vendor be a recurring side character, but um, but you can totally choose it and kind of justify it. Well, I was thinking maybe this is this is exactly it that uh, Doctor Quick, after his adventures um, in the old temple, has maybe gone back to see the two pox monks who had their their own shop. Nice. Uh, they've tended his wounds, and so perhaps uh, this pair. And I'm sorry, I've forgotten their names. Croak and something. Uh, Guttle maybe they can and, and Croak. Yeah. Guttle and Croak are now mm -hmm. his uh, recurring side characters who may be consulted on matters of black market goods. That's really fun. I would love, love to get to have them give you all kinds of new quack remedies. Um, so yeah, once per assignment, you can um, use whatever information they give you to stumble on a clue and you tell me what it is. So you get to come up with it. So actually you get to do that. I hope to see all kinds of weirdness. Awesome. Um, and then from Young Jolly Junk, uh, everyone gets to choose rewards. I've put them at the bottom as well. I don't remember if you've met the character Pearl Lesh or not. Um, I feel like we haven't. Um, but if if that sounds interesting, we can hand wave that. We can pick another side character you met that you can um do a similar thing. You get an extra clue on the information move uh, when it's consulting that character about discarded objects and polluted areas. Then you also can choose a young jolly junk branded plush toy. <laughs> A survival bracelet made of recycled plastic, a memento from a dead god, you can describe that, or a memento from the investigation, 
um, ask another custodian to describe it. I, I kind of feel uh, unsurprisingly drawn to the uh, memento from a dead god. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I think um, I think I might actually go for the head of that um, uh, that uh, uh, statue I found. Um, nice. Oh, that's sick. Um, now feel free to veto this, Gabriel, because it might be OP, but you know that, uh, I guess CEO or whoever I met at the factory, mm -hmm. can that be the recurring side character? Oh, fun. Yeah. Um, Sick. Beth Mortel. Yeah. Yeah. Thing is, there's no such thing as, I mean, maybe there's such thing as overpowered things, <laughs> but the dice roll is always going to determine it. It just gives me more fun consequences. So don't worry about it delicious um do you want it to be do you want to change the wording on that um what you can uh consult her about um you know i'm open to that if you think something would be more appropriate like i'm very interested in what you think would be the alternative. it could be like like industry and recycled things or something like that because i think you were starting to pass off like be it go on a tour and talk to her about the industry and stuff like that oh yeah I'm very interested in, in industry cool. focused things. Not the, um, well, so go ahead. Uh, I'm really happy to say that maybe Dr. Quick has kind of um, received a package from either Zeph or Bastion that's just kind of wrapped, bubble wrapped up and it's a young Jolly Junk branded plush toy. And he has no idea what the hell this is <laughs> or what use he could possibly have for it but that's what he's ended up with great yep so she's an otter-headed god and sort of her dress train looks like it's you know made of recycled trash yeah he hates it it's awful it's it's, yeah. it's hideous why would someone send this to him yeah what are we thinking for meriwether um i think i'll take a memento and perhaps uh, Dr. Quick can tell me what it is. Oh, this is really hard because I wasn't here for the last session of Young Jelly Junk. So maybe if if uh, B uh, doesn't mind me tossing the hot potato mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. B might be a better place to come up with something. Oh, sure. Well, um, let's see. I think that very similar to Dr. Quick, uh, Bastion and Zeph have gotten you like gotten you a package like a little souvenir and i think it is like a young jolly junk <clears throat> young jolly junk branded like piece of jewelry like a like a necklace with like a little otter headed god like <laughs> like little amulet type thing it might even be a locket like a kid's type locket it's really chintzy it's really <laughs> cheap <laughs> that's awesome thank you yeah keep our coast jolly Probably some garish font, all that. Yeah, <laughs> I never thought about this. Uh, like story wise, mechanically, you get rewards, but it's really fun to think about, like a character not being there and the other saying, "Oh yeah, we got you something. We took care of that." And you're like, what is this? <laughs> so that's fun. Um, great. I'll introduce the next assignment. Then, um, feel. F I guess some of you are pretty much. I think the rest of you, besides Doctor Quick, are pretty much in situations, but we can talk about if you want to split up in any particular way. So I've put it in the keeper as well, but the next assignment that you hear about is the hungering roots. So there are reports of unlicensed sacrifices taking place in this warehouse uh, east of Glottage. And, you know, psychic probic teas are, are a thing that you can get in stores or advertisements advertisements on, on the radio for them and everything. Um, but it seems that someone has gotten especially ambitious and is trying to outproduce their competitors um, of, you know, tea growers by imprisoning a harvest god in an indoor growing facility. And um, they're using some combination of hydroponics, automated lighting, experimental prayer marks, 
And apparently they found a way to continuously cycle a harvest ritual just to maximize their production and outpace their competitors. Um, but the god they bound is accustomed to the domain of field and meadow. It's it's used to being worshipped in rituals that invoke the sun and the moon instead of these artificial lights and humidity controlled rooms. And it's growing rapidly. It's demanding greater sacrifices. I will uh, let's ask Doctor Quick because he wasn't here last time. How do you know that such an entity will eventually find a way to break free and threaten the the, uh, the surrounding neighborhood? Um, we know because we have countless case studies of it happening before. There are all kinds of sites all across the peninsula which are now fenced off, uninhabitable because of such gods that have gone rogue. Uh, the truth is that industry is greed. And people always think that an extra bit of profit is worth it to keep pushing and pushing, but something always breaks. Yeah. So you have a couple opportunities, questions and opportunities here. The first approach is how is the harvest God most vulnerable? Um, you can choose to resolve the assignment by destroying or neutralizing this entity so it won't grow back. Getting a little more complex, you can find out what resources this harvest god offers if appeased. So if you can work with the growers to change their methods um, and establish a more sustainable operation that doesn't threaten the community, that's another approach. Or if you're really ambitious, you can figure out where this harvest god can be safely transplanted. And to do this, you fully break the god from its confines, allow it to grow freely, and show the local residents how to coexist with it. Uh, and this final approach unlocks a special move called the Mark of Quickening, which it's in the Keeper, but it basically lets you make a roll with vitality instead of another stat by invoking the cycles of birth and decay within living matter. So that's all that info is in the Keeper. That's on the table. Um, still have the remaining questions for the Dusk Mother. So now that you know where the, uh, the nest is, just going to review that real quick as well. The The other options now available to you are um, how is the angel bound to the skeleton family, which is complexity four. So you can try to resolve this by weakening, driving away, or destroying the angel. So you disrupt this cycle dependence between the angel and the family so that they might survive on their own. And of course, so this, uh, this area won't be threatened by the angel in the same way. Or... Uh, you can decide, you can discover what purpose drives the angel, resolving the assignment by freeing it from the skeleton family and giving it something else or some other place to protect instead. And this also gives you a special move if you take that approach called the Dusk Mother's Embrace. And uh, the Bower Companion, I think we're just getting started. We haven't answered a question yet. But the question you have there is complexity too. And it's just, what's the quickest way to retake the trade road? Destroying the god or appeasing it? That's complexity too. So I think Meriwether is with Cousin Skelton. I think you've determined where the nest is. Um, Zeph is with this hunter that I'm going to actually look up so I can stop forgetting the name. And Bastion is out um, near the town of Alm. I think you came across that truck in the ditch. But where, uh, John, where do you think Dr. Quick would go next? Uh, hmm. I mean, I think unless any of my colleagues would have said they need more help, and it sounds like Bastion at least is happy going solo. I think I would probably head on to the next assignment. So he try and tackle the hungering roots. Okay. Sounds good. Um, so I will we'll pull up a journey scene and cut over to the others. Um again, we're very hand wavy about travel, but how do you think um you're traveling just so we get a visual you found some other vehicle? Uh I think he is very unhappily on a bus. Like one of those kind of proper cross-country buses that stops. It's very slow. It might be at like a gas station and everyone's kind of getting snacks and it's taking hours. And he's just sitting there with his medicine bag 
incredibly upset with it all. That's really fun. Um, okay, I have a fun, I have a fun scene for you then. Um, check something real quick. So in the journey scenes tab, I didn't realize it. It's more sophisticated than I noticed. Uh, there's a tab you can open and actually see the prompts. So, um, Dr. Quick, on the side of one of the bus windows, actually just on one of the seats in the back, you find a flyer. Um, so this is going to be a special journey scene because of where the conspiracy is. This is the escaped test subject. So you find a flyer that warns locals to be on the alert for a saint in the area. The saint is described as highly dangerous, but residents are assured, uh, you know, the, the broader community um, is assured that law enforcement is specially prepared to deal with it. They simply need to be informed if anyone sees anything suspicious. Um, what detail makes you believe that the saint, this could be detail you see out the window or just from the description, what detail makes you believe that the saint is following you or your companions specifically? Oh, interesting. Do I want to paste it um, in the chat? And I have one more. I, th um, I think I'll, I'll I'll leave it open that the saint itself can pop up later on. I think I'm just going to say that on the the back of the flyer, there's a map of you know victims and dotted around the map and. They look random, but knowing where I'm headed to and where my fellow custodians are headed to, this is absolutely drawing a nice little trail uh, all around the circumference of where we've been. So, yeah, the saint is hunting in our locality, basically. Nice. Yeah. And normally a custodian traveling alone could do their personal ritual to clear conditions. But because you are a pox monk, it doesn't work that way for you. Um, but just a reminder. Um, if you ever want to look for an opportunity to clear a condition according to your move, um, you know, interrupt me, find a way to interject so you can do that. Um, all right, maybe let's pick up with uh, Meriwether. So you were, I don't remember if um, you have gone to like to this underground nest or if that was just a thing that we've determined a bit more out of character. Um, what do you think, El? If I recall correctly, where we left off, Cousin had suggested that we go sleep in the nest for the night. Oh, right. Okay. Um, so we didn't we didn't get there, but I assume that that's what Mary Weather is going to do. I mean, she's not going to wander around the woods alone at night. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's perfect. Um, so actually, I will describe it because we've answered that question. So the nest... Um, unlike the classic like giant bird's nest in the tree you you were in before this is a hollow shelter it's this pile of wreckage um, kind of like those piles of logs that Zeph had seen earlier but this um, has kind of old tarps piled in places there's clothing um, furniture cushions kind of like anything that could have been scavenged scavenged for insulation there's moss and dead leaves, um, maybe even scraps of fur. And as you kind of creep in, there's this ragged opening that gapes to the, the night sky overhead, but it's still very warm. Um, I paint the scene for you. Uh, the skeletons seem to have reverted to their most basic animal instincts. What fragments of their humanity have they managed to cling to? I think that nestled in the in the junk, frankly, uh, in the nest. Mm -hmm. um, there are also a bunch of like little toys, plushies, um, a dirty kind of ragged blanket, uh, things for for baby. Maybe they bring them here for nice. safety on nights when the woods feel especially dangerous. Of that. Last session, didn't you play a record or something? Were we talking about music you were playing for cousin? 
as she was singing a song from right, right. a record she has in her altar, yeah. Nice. Um, yeah, do you, so you um, are settling in to get some sleep or is there anything else you want to do first? I think, yeah, she's like kind of trying to settle in, but you know, things mm -hmm. are poking at her back. Um, she's not used to sleeping in a nest, so mm -hmm. it's not so comfortable. So she's just kind of lying there on her back, um, looking like kind of blithely upward. And she'll Cousins. say, I'm yeah. sorry. No, no, no. What's cousin doing? I'm curious. Oh, cousin. Uh, it doesn't help that cousin is kind of, you know, like a kid who like takes the top bunk first, just kind of has grabbed all the actually comfortable blankets, just like, and started to like pull them on himself and just like kind of huddle in his sort of blanket nest that you've seen him do before. Um, cousin? Yeah. It's been a long time as you know since mother allowed me into her nest um did she make this for us are, are we her only children i think cousin it looks a little perplexed in this sort of like she she showed us how to make this what do you mean only of course we're her children what do you mean there could be other children they would be here with us we're her her children it doesn't seem to click really uh we could we can make a roll out of this though if you want to look for any other evidence we can um can yeah sure yeah. i think yeah. it sounds like cousin's pretty comfy so he might <laughs> sleep soon yeah sure um so i think Meriwether will take that opportunity to sort of poke around and see what's what all is here okay we'll come back to that for like an information move cool. and let's see so zeph you are with ridley who kind of like again middle of the night you had found a, a clue i believe of a dropped like haunch of some chitterling like beast. And then he described an ear was in a weird place. Um, and so that didn't really help when you're trying to, to say, you know, just passing through um, really seems a little suspicious. And I think you have a condition as well. So currently they're sort of like, I don't know what you're doing in these woods, but this isn't the place to be. You're going to drive your uh, van back to town. Um, I'll, I'll describe the town briefly because I don't, uh, I forget if we've seen it properly, but then I'm curious where you want to go. So the town of Weft, um, yeah, it's the middle of the night, basically. <laughs> um, the few storefronts that there are, the windows are cracked. Um, a lot of them are papered over on the inside. There's faded signs, a couple abandoned cars. Um, there's like a, a rusty bike chained to a signpost somewhere, um, potholes, a lot of weeds, um by all appearances this town is is dead it's dying out but how can you tell that some of the residents care for it fiercely still oh, i think we did do this question i think did I we do this? this i feel like i do it was, but it was like we probably did back i can so answer from it again, a, though. a different side of town yeah. <laughs> a different part of town i think that there are like there's like a lot of windows like kind of in the distance that have little lanterns lit in them and it looks like they're warm homes like that there's people actually living here even if they're kind of tucked away yeah yeah there's still um it, it's not been abandoned it's just sort of like decayed over time but it's still actively lived in and ridley because once once they've directed you to town they're sort of like look i'm very much a live and let live type of person I'm just out here trying to make it like everyone else. It's not my business until you come into the woods, uh, perhaps scavenging, perhaps doing your own hunting, and that's fine, but you're going to draw the wrong kind of attention. So if you want to be here, if you want to be a guest in our town, I need to know what your business is. Otherwise, the highway's that way. Um, I, I, 
I I did not mean to break any rules. Um, what what do you mean? Uh, wrong kind of what should what should I be doing differently? As if he didn't just get approached <laughs> by the the dusk mother herself. Yeah, kind of um, gives you an odd look. It's like, well, uh, you don't seem to <laughs> surprise you survived going out in the middle of the woods, uh, carrying looks back in your van, uh, big carcasses clearly from uh the meat processing plant which if you knew anything about this area it's, it's had some troubles it's had some raids oh, re really i just found this thing this was out here i what what do you mean raids i definitely want to like you do an information yeah move on yeah it's an information move and, yeah. and see if we can actually do anything with this yeah let's do come back for that roll yeah, i was like do you want me to go yeah. ahead and roll we go come back yeah, let's come back yeah i'm trying to Trying to manage, uh, make sure I'm leaving it out for too long, which is fun when we're all split up. Uh, let's see where Bastion is, um, where we left you. Um, remind me, were you near the the truck that was in the ditch? Yeah, that's that's right. I think he'd gone maybe a little bit off the road, but yeah, it was was still broadly in the area. Um, I can um, come back to what uh, locations are there really quick, if that helps. So, yeah, you're kind of on the edge of the trade road where, you know, you're under these looming pines, electricity pylons, cracked red dirt. Um, there's this ditch, the, that truck, the Fadings Ferry and Freight Truck is overturned. Um, and I don't think we've really investigated that in too much detail yet because of this uh this sort of shambling uh tall forest like uh saint that kind of came around the corner um you know that nearby somewhere is the town of alm itself and this road and this town are on the edge of the whisper plains which is the wilderness it's forest field a lot of these uh these pylons kind of polluted canals muddy trade roads um but all around that is a lot of fog, so getting to any of those places might might take a little bit of effort. Um, yeah, yeah, sure thing. Um, so yeah, I think I think probably at this point, Bastian's um, intent is to head into uh, into the village. Um, but I think he he has that sort of sudden moment of remembering that yeah, he was going to investigate that truck before um, he got distracted by the. Uh, by the saint so i think he's going to head back over to the cabin and, and yeah um like i said see if there's uh, a body in here that needs uh disposing of sounds good and that scene uh last session i believe you'd kind of like approached you held up something it took it from your hand i think it marked you somehow yeah that's right and i think um... okay. yeah so it's not immediately there. Yeah, I think let's go through an information move here. Um, so I think this would be insight. Sure thing. And I don't know if you have any conditions that would affect that. Just double checking. Uh, I think Hazy would put you a disadvantage here because that came from sure the thing. fog and the it, whole it did, yeah. strangeness. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that is, um, sorry, insights. I didn't hear. Yeah. Um, that is a ten. Wow, oh, nice. Um, great. So you find a clue. I'll come back to you so I can sure. take one out properly. And then, um, Doctor Quick, you have eventually. Your bus, your bus ride. Um, Just go ahead. Before I arrive, Gabriel, could I please use my my so my move allows me to uh, do my personal ritual to pick up a clue. Could I please do that? Oh, cool. I get yeah, that? yeah. Um, remind me. That's that's your core move. Yes. So I'm gonna just so I can. Do it properly. This is where you you stumble on a clue, so you can make it up, or you ask me for one. Exactly. Uh, I stumble on it. Oh, great. Okay. Um, and I assume you want this to be for hungering roots. Yeah, that would that makes sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. You have any ideas? 
Yeah, so I, I imagine so for my personal ritual, maybe just uh, en route to the destination, uh, Dr. Quick stops off at a, an old storage unit in the middle of nowhere amongst dozens of others. Uh, several heavy padlocks on the doors. He kind of fumbles and unlocks them one by one, opens up the door with a rattle, and inside is just this very heavy case, again, heavily chained and padlocked. And as he comes in and just sets his, his bag down, it maybe just gives a little shake. And he just kind of unlocks it, opens it with a creak, stoops down looking into the darkness of the uh, the case and says to something inside, brother, I need your advice. Um, and as he closes, maybe 10 minutes later, the door of the storage unit once again, um, Dr. Quick comes away with a useful bit of knowledge about where he's headed. Uh, so this psychotropic tea company that's potentially causing trouble, it's a relatively new um, business in the area. Uh, the local region has always been renowned for its botany, uh, gardens of lavender, chamomile, hibiscus, peppermint, all these beautiful blooming grasses and plants that have been used for all varieties of teas. Um, and the god that used to rule over these botanical gardens um, he was just colloquially called Big Herb, uh, kind of a you know a green man style figure with a big mm -hmm. beard and antlers who presided over nature's bounty, but he's been driven away by this company. Oh, that's cool. Love that. Is that um? This sounds like this is the depiction of you visiting your altar. Was that? That was right. For sort my, of put us my personal ritual is visiting my altar. Oh yeah, yeah, very cool. Um cannot wait to get more glimpses of whatever's going on there um <laughs> incredible yeah so if, uh when you get a chance if you wouldn't mind putting that in the keeper um as a clue um but beyond that um you couple couple locations you will come to as you kind of find your way to to where this uh producer is supposed to be there are this is like in a bit of a warehouse district. There's definitely some abandoned warehouses, um, um, places where, you know, vines have started to overtake crumbling bricks. There's these tenements that are, they look like they're ready to fall down. They're kind of teetering apartment buildings with these rusty fire escapes and clotheslines between them. Um, there's a number of warehouses. If you kind of look for the right one, eventually you'll be able to find the most likely one. So there's the warehouse itself. And um, kind of around a few of these warehouses, there's like abandoned gardens, um, but there's one in particular that looks like it has a big compost heap um, that might indicate other activities. The rest of the locations are gonna be indoors. But from the exterior, those are places you could kind of look any any initial thoughts of how you want to approach this? Uh, well, I'd be really intrigued to know: is this is this the middle of the day? Are there going to be people likely working in these warehouses? Doctor Quick would be looking out for, or is it that it's now closing down time and he might be able to sneak in and sneak around? I, what everything is interesting because we're hand waving the specifics of travel, so it could be that you got here later in the day and things are probably settling down. If that's more interesting to you. Uh, well, if think, yeah, okay. So maybe if it's the evening, he yep. would probably be looking for. Are there anywhere where workers might be congregating? Whether there's a a bar or you know a cafe somewhere where, or even just a bus stop to get out of town, where maybe he could just stop by and start chatting to people without raising suspicion too much. Yeah, I think this is a a weirdly isolated location. It seems like people come here to work, but then people are living nearby in these apartments, but you see people that are like out on their balconies, kind of chatting, watering some plants, um, having tea, that kind of thing. So you could just kind of approach some locals. Uh, I think actually, cause it's narratively interesting. I would love to use my other move. Uh, cool. so I would like to call upon, um, a life of service, uh, where the first time you arrive at a new assignment, a side character remembers you for your service. And if it's okay, Gabriel, uh, mm -hmm. side character actually was helped by my brother, twin brother, Eric, oh, um, nice. but mistakes me very much for him. Oh, that's fine. Um, so the, the side character can show up and either warn me about a danger nearby 
uh, provide a gift or uh, assist with a single task in future, I guess. Sounds good. Let's come back to you. Um, I'll introduce a side character that will recognize you as Eric. And then from there, at some point, kind of tell me which of those you want to pursue. Um, yeah, the twin, having a, a twin is great. Um, so let's go back to, I believe, Meriwether. Um, you were kind of looking at this nest after a cousin had fallen asleep, and we're going to do an information move. Um, Just checking if you have if you have relevant conditions here. You are full of conditions, though. So I am <laughs> something to consider. <laughs> um, uh, I don't think it's relevant here. Just for looking around, you are marked by Hopworth Industries. You are a disappointment, and you are blighted, which is bitten by that fungal god. But I think you're good. Cool. Uh, which um stat am I rolling on? Um, I, th I think insight is is fair, just for kind of like assessing the situation. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that is a four. Oh no. <laughs> um, I think. Gosh, four. I think of everything that's happened with you so far. I think with a four, um, the nest grows dark from above. Um, that bit of sky is completely darkened, and you feel the nest shift, and you kind of realize there's a few gaps. Um, and instead of gaps of branches, they're gaps of of feathers or feather-like shadow feathers. Um, and you kind of see those hints of those uh, large claws kind of coming in, clutching the top of the nest. And uh, the mother has landed on top and is roosting here um, for the night. And I think um, kind of pokes this this head, um, pokes in to look at you, um, kind of checking on you and kind of nudges you to the side of the nest. Um, this great, again, it's sort of, uh almost like a beak but made out of like fossilized it looks like not a regular bird's beak but like fossilized tree bark or maybe like whale skin it's unclear in the darkness um but you're kind of being nudged to the side like a, a chick in this nest and um the the miss condition is basically that you're kind of caught here for the time being um you're you're very much being observed by mother yeah i think I'll, I'll i'll keep that that's okay. that's fun um i think yeah as soon as mother lands um meriwether sort of goes docile kind of like a child like who's up wandering around in the middle of the night yeah doing something they're not supposed to do um as soon as like she realizes mom is awake and she's here mm -hmm. um she like pretends that she was she was in bed the whole time, right? <laughs> so yeah, she'll like, sort of curl up next to cousin. Yeah. You kind of nudge, and then if you settle down, it's sort of like, no, you're supposed to be sleeping. Okay, you're still now. Okay, and then you're left alone. Um, That's fun. We'll come back to that. Uh, Zeph, you are... You're talking to Ridley about the Hopworth Industries. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I think... Based on your conditions, this would be disadvantage, um, right? So this would be with an information move with presence. Oh, lordy, that's a zero for me in presence. <laughs> so we're going to see what happens. Okay, that is a five. Oh, no. <laughs> that um, tracks. <laughs> yeah. I think while you're talking, I think you see some headlights approaching um, and release like... Oh, great here we go see this is what happens and try to help you out try to do the right thing and um you 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 know uh, so the car comes up and and pulls in front of your van and it's sort of like it says hopworth industries on the side it's got a little security light on it and you see this very pissed off looking guy get out in this uniform he looks bleary uh, a lot of stubble 
um just looks like he's been having the worst night stained uniform um you know overalls and everything kind of comes up and glares and like right uh i think at that point you you notice or you, you realize that that haunch that you've you dragged into your van it was still like bleeding god so it's probably like blood's coming out of the, the crack of the door just like interesting it's like ridley is it looking at ridley then like looking at you he's like who the hell is this i thought you'd know better i'm gonna have to i'm gonna do all the paperwork now i'm gonna have to call in hey, no 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 there is no need for paperwork here um i'm just passing through doing a little cleanup for uh some preparations for the saint electric uh she's coming out here you know the wire bitten shot we're we're pre we're preparing for that and um doing a little cleanup a little surveying don't you worry this is all very above board kind of looking uh, yeah sure and goes and your your uh van uh door is rolled open <laughs> Takes the flashlight, it's like, mm hmm. Yes. It's like, you know, this is actually going to be, you actually done me a favor here. I can, oh. I can actually pin this on something tangible. There's someone here actually just stealing. It's as simple as scavengers stealing from us. Stealing? Nothing more complicated than that. I would never steal. <laughs> I'm probably going to mark a verse for this because this seems like it's going to absolutely fuck me over. It's not going anywhere good. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. You know, mark a verse. Um, we can we can bump it up. Um, Mostly so I don't get thrown in jail. I mean, I don't know where the nearest jail is either. So um, <laughs> <laughs> I think instead, if it's if you bump it up to a seven to nine, I think there's headlights approaching and Ridley's like basically is like um, I think it's gonna be like, all right, I, I'm out of here. Gets out of out of your van and was like, I'd recommend you get out of town. Don't come back. And uh, yeah, yeah, they, yes. they've had enough of you, basically. Yes. Like, come back. so your base will be pursued. I think. Awesome, I love it because I will instantly go to town. I will not. <laughs> <laughs> might have to, yeah, hit the road. Um, eh, we'll see. I might go help one of my buds. Yeah circle around you already are an outsider um i don't think that's a condition it's more of a fictional positioning that you're like mm -hmm. currently being pursued so we'll come back to yeah. how that plays out love it um okay and then sebastian um you're heading into town no sorry you found a clue um yeah that's yeah So in in the cabin of that truck, I think um, there's a map in the passenger seat um you you know just kind of like sprawl open um it's a paper map of the area heavily blacked out with spirals um, and it's full 10 so there's no other complications right now um other than that it's it's empty you know it's it's on its side you don't see any any driver anyone nearby um, awesome. that fog is growing thick, you know. Um, yeah, then I think um, uh, um, Bastian's going to kind of fold up the map and shove it into uh, uh, into his bag, um, and you know, slam the door to the truck and start, yeah, heading down the road into town. That's good. And maybe for context too, maybe it's like a you know, a trucker's map, or there's like some company, map, pretty standard looking map of the different roads. Um, let's describe the town for a second, though. And you were on a motorcycle, right? 
So, yeah. uh, no, just just walking. Um, I was walking. Uh, yeah, 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 he was uh, hitchhiking. That's right. So the town of Alm, um, it's barely big enough to be considered a town. It's only noticeable because it's close to the trade road. Um, but as you get into town, you'll you'll notice a sagging town hall, which is boarded shut. There's hand painted signs for gravel roads, in different directions. Um, in the distance, you see smoke from wood stoves uh, mingling with the truck exhaust, the sharp scent of pine, and um, weirdly silent with that fog. But as you kind of get closer, instead of hearing other sounds of life, you hear uh, from people. You hear bird song from the forest that seems to be kind of pressing in from all sides. Uh, paint the scene for you. What here tells you that this town, despite it being close to a thoroughfare, doesn't get much outside traffic? Um, I think... Um, I think there are places, um, you know, here that are clearly like businesses, shops, what have you. Um, but um, the signs on all of them are super faded. Um, and um, there's not really any indication of what they are, any opening times or anything like that, because everyone who lives here knows knows what they sell and knows when they're open. Nice. So yeah, in town, there's that a few places you could kind of pursue. We mentioned truck exhaust, so I assume there's there's other. There's a truck here somewhere that's kind of pulled over. Um, there's the the town hall, a couple different buildings. Um, I think you see kind of further off, um, maybe the edge of town. It looks like there's other smaller homes. Um, can't tell from here if they're like all of them are occupied or not. Some might be well be abandoned. Um, you can kind of make your way in and find folks to talk to if you want. Yeah, I think that's um, that's sort of what Bastion's going to do. Is going to wander into town. Is basically going to kind of just sort of wander around until he sees somewhere that seems to have, you know, the lights on and the sounds of people inside. And and uh, yeah, see if he can can suss out somewhere that people are are gathering. Um, I think weirdly, the first person you see um, there is there's a very faded welcome to Alm town um, that's being repainted um, by someone who's kind of uh, graying hair, the temples, they've got this bolo tie. Um, they're weirdly like, like well-dressed, but they're painting the sign themselves, um, kind of redoing the lettering, trying to give this bright, cheery coat of paint. Um, they see you and they go, oh, well, welcome, welcome. Um, to our our humble town and kind of gestures like like they do this all the time like they're almost on a commercial for welcoming you to their their town because you must be out here hiking uh, beautiful landscape great trails uh trust me we're just um we just had to close down for the season you know how it is but but plenty to offer still um can i help you find your way oh uh, sorry sorry i'm ellison ellison hunter i'm sort of a bit of they, they call me the mayor here really it's a bit of a honorary title to be honest not a lot of us here but but i do what i can I'm here to help oh um it's uh it's lovely to meet you my name is uh dyer bastian dyer um he'll you know hold out his hand mm -hmm. um shake very enthusiastically um yes I, I i i've just come come in off the uh off the road um and uh i thought i'd um stop into town and see um uh, see, see, see how things were here. How, uh, if there's somewhere I can uh, stop the night. Um... Sure, sure. Um, it, humble, humble offerings we have here, but but we do keep them. We do keep them ready um, for the truckers. Um, of course, you may have heard about we have a weather. You know that fog. It's making it a little difficult. So I've been kind of uh, kind of waiting for. For folks for that to clear for them to come through so wonderful wonderful and then starts to to lead you into town and um show I, you uh yeah you know. um yeah i i did see a um uh crushed uh truck um he'll not said back um a little ways 
um, a little ways up the road. I, the, the driver wasn't there, so I assume he's uh, gone off to get help or or whatever. That's terrible. I'm, uh, I haven't, haven't seen anyone. Um, gosh, I better I better tell the others. Uh, better see if we need to get get some help up that way. Didn't see anyone, but that's probably fine. They, they must have already found some help. Uh, probably another crew coming to to pull that truck back out. Um, yeah, they will start to. I think direct you to like it's not even a motel. It's it's probably very probably like a, a cabin um, that's rentable here. I'm a, I'm a, sorry, uh, as a keeper. I'm I'm like shuffling a little bit, like trying to find you a place here on the sheet. So I'm going to come back to you for that. No worries, no worries. But you'll get more of a chance to see the town and, and ask questions. Awesome. Um, Doctor Quick, you're walking up to these apartments and you're just kind of taking it in a little bit. Um, uh, I had a paint the scene question for you. So again, these apartment buildings look like they're just probably, you know, in violation of all kinds of codes. Like they've just been left here. No one's been really helping keep up with anything. Fire escapes. Um, like they're, uh, people have actually kind of like found a way to lash them together in places to make temporary bridges. There's, uh, clothing lines. There's just, again, abandoned vehicles and, Looks like construction, scaffolding in the alleyways, weeds growing everywhere. But among all this, uh, what innovations of the locals do you notice that, that seem to help them survive in this hostile environment? It just it doesn't look like it's uh, close to any other town. They're kind of a lot of makeshift things here. They're making do. Uh, I'm going to imagine that maybe up on these kind of high teetering apartment blocks, uh, there's a few kind of insulting posters up about the St. Electric and then some just kind of homemade little windmills spinning that are clearly at least providing some electricity to the locals. So there's kind of just assortment of kind of constantly whirring little windmills uh, dotted up around the roofs. Nice. Uh, you hear, just as you're looking up, you're a this this uh, elderly woman's voice called Eric Eric is that you and I don't remember or if you want to tell us if you've been here before or you've helped this woman before we can leave that open uh, I have never been here before and okay. I've never helped this woman but I'm going to make damn sure she thinks I have okay. so Great. I say yes of course it's me Eric hello it's so wonderful to see you again and, like, and I kind of give that, that little pause of kind of like, just give me a name so I don't have to. Oh, yeah. It's uh, Patricia Morell. Oh, um, Patricia. Yes. I, it, you know, I, 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 my memory is not what it was, but I had thought that you were living in this neck of the woods. And so I was in the neighborhood and I thought I simply must stop by and see Patricia. Um, I know it's, it's getting a little bit dark, but I, I don't suppose I could impose upon you maybe for uh, a cup of tea or a nice glass of water. Oh no, pose. No, never. Please, please come up. And she kind of uh directs you towards um what would have been like a, a really sketchy looking fire escape, but it looks like it's been reinforced. Locals have kind of wrapped um wire, they've they've fixed it, they've extended it all the way, so they've kind of made their own um back uh staircase. Um oh yeah, you, you have to see how uh well you helped me with my cats that time. They've uh you know they were they were stuck on the roof and now they come and go as they please. You, you're so kind of you. So such a great solution with um. I, I don't I don't know what she what you would have helped her do. I want to tell you um. But she starts to kind of talk about how you've helped her around the house. Uh, she's in um looks like her kind of go to outfit is always uh, a full like very comfortable bathrobe over her other clothes, um. Massive tea mug, and um you know, going by tropes, probably like hair and rollers, um, just kind of watching the neighborhood invites you in for tea. And uh, is there any other part to that move? I, I don't want to overstep. You get to tell what you helped do before, or you can. Uh, well, obviously, so it wasn't me. So I don't know what my brother did, my, my saintly it. brother. Um, I think in terms of the reward, if it's okay, I would love to mm. receive a gift. So I need to ask another player what it is and add it to my nice. altar. Um, 
So B, what do I have? Uh, is this gift from Patricia, I assume? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think she gives you like you asked for some tea and she gives you like a travel mug. She has like way too many. Um, mm -hmm. And they're all different. Like, it looks like they're from like all sorts of different people and places. And she's like, Oh, you can keep it. And mm -hmm. you can decide what's on it. Um, it's probably a little gaudy, or at least not something that Dr. Quick would pick. No, I think I look at these sparkly uh, cats on the mug and I go, oh, this is the second gift I've received today. Which I'm very <laughs> grateful for. Uh, cool, I'll add that to my altar. Nice. And again, as with everything, sorry, I just heard gaudy in this context differently. Um, you know, everything is a mascot god of, of something else. Um, but yeah, she invites you in. Um, it's like, oh, don't worry about the time. I, I keep I don't sleep much these days. I always just like to to watch watch the sunrise, the sunset, watch the stars. I'm I'm always out and about. And, um, welcomes you in, and she's got a great. Um, you know, on the way in, you notice her balcony um, is full of like potted plants and herbs that she's been mm -hmm. tending. Well, I think I say, oh, so, oh, Patricia, what lovely plants out on the balcony. It must be so nice just to, to stand out there and, and watch the world go by. I'm sure you see all kinds of things. Yes, I do, I do. Um, you know, mostly seems to be this this fuss below these people keep a lot of coming and going with the warehouses, you know, shoveling dirt in and out. It seems that they could just help the rest of us out with our gardens, but they seem to be pretty occupied with that compost heap over there. That sounds so noisy, so disruptive. What are they doing in there exactly? Do you have any idea? Let's do an information move. Yeah. All right. I think. <laughs> um, I don't think any conditions would affect you here, if anything this would probably just be advantage because of your, the setup from your other move. Lovely. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and. Oh, my presence. Uh, presence or presence. Yeah. That's a zero. So I'm going to need that advantage. Okay. Rolling. Uh, a two, a five and a two. So seven. Nice. Seven. Um, see just gonna say that um well it's i don't really know what they're up to but they seem to be um you know we don't get much of our own power here and she kind of points to those little windmills we kind of have to uh rig our own systems this some of the the children around her quite quite smart with their their gadgets they um they've really got some they're so so inventive but down there they're uh, at all hours um the lights are flickering on and off uh they're i don't know they're trying to set up a new factory but usually i've heard they at least help out the neighborhoods when they do this they kind of come and and re rebuild a little bit um uh but the strangest thing um I, I, I've noticed my flowers on the balcony. Um, this, this, maybe this is just my my vision. Um, I've had a little bit of trouble these days, but but I swear when their lights are growing brighter, um, my flowers seem to be growing brighter. I don't know. I don't really understand. It's like the color gets more vivid. Maybe you should look at it. Um, maybe when it's light. I, I'd love to, Patricia. I, I'm not really sure. Where can I even stay around here? Um, I think she'll mention, oh, well, um, this floor is actually really pretty quiet. Um, there's no one staying. Uh, she kind of mentions a couple other um, empty apartments that no one's used for a long time. It's like, can't say they're the cleanest. Um, of course, you're welcome you know, you're so, so helpful to me. It's, I don't have much here, but uh, I don't use the sofa. She's welcome to stay here if you don't mind. Um, you know, the cats, cats come and go. They might not let you sleep. They might, 
you might have to kind of work that out with them. That's really up to the cats, not me. I think Welcome I look at the kind it. of the the sofa covered in cat hairs and just yeah. say, uh, I couldn't couldn't possibly deprive the cats of their their sleeping pad. I, I will find one of the empty apartments upstairs. Thank you, Patricia. Nice. So yeah, light bulbs uh, flickering as flowers seem to grow brighter in hue. Um, is that clue? We're just past the hour. Maybe let's take a five minute break here and we'll catch up with everyone. See what's next. Awesome. All right, so let's pick up with, uh, let's pick up with Meriwether. Um, we're kind of lumping all this. We're not worried too much about time. It's it's nighttime. We can cut forward in time individually since you're all isolated. Um, but L, uh, Meriwether is is resting in the nest here with cousin, and um, I don't know if you're actually going to sleep or not. But you've sort of been nudged like a little baby bird into the side of the nest by this huge angel. Um. <laughs> What do you think you want to do next? Yeah, I love that for me. Uh, <laughs> I yeah, if you want anything different, I guess I don't know. <laughs> you can just chill. Um, I think she will sleep there. I think there is a strange sort of comfort, uh, with like cousin's warmth next to her and sort of the the way um mothers. The dusk mother's presence seems to like still all the sounds of the of the forest. Um, it actually is nice in a way. Um, oh, I actually have a verse to narrate that might cool. fit here. Yeah. Um. So this is uh, the verse of the dreaming nest, which actually everyone has to narrate at some point. Actually, everyone um, can narrate it. Maybe while you're, can we um, repost it for the group? Or I think yeah. it's in the keeper. I can also copy it into the chat. I'm looking cool. at it right now. Yeah, go ahead with yours, but then we'll have every other custodian also narrate this one. Yeah. Um, in the present, we see Meriwether sort of curling up, um, trying to fall asleep. Uh I imagine that she sort of is feeling a bit of a, a stomach ache, this like strange sensation of her organs, like slowly, like beginning to knot themselves together, kind of becoming one unified mycelial network um, based on the uh, the blight of uh, rides beneath the loam. But uh, she'll finally manage to close her eyes and we flash back to her curled up on a train to Nash. Um, she's like kind of nestled underneath like a downy soft blanket and watching the, the landscape blur. Uh, the new train route, of course, avoids the part of the city that was destroyed by the war. And uh, we see it pull into the station. She steps off the train and we like cut abruptly to her walking into this spacious, like almost luxurious apartment. It's clean, it's glittering. There's bookshelves lining almost every wall. Um, her mother's author photos in frames on the shelves. Uh, these huge windows with views of the city below. Um, part of it like pristine and beautiful and the other just like ashen and dark and obliterated. Um, her mother steps forward dressed dramatically in a colorful caftan with a drink in hand and she exclaims Mary and like you know gives her the mwah, mwah kisses on her cheeks and Meriwether is really stiff like not returning the hug at all and she's like you know it's Meriwether now there is already a Mary Resnick in the Performers Guild mom says well well Meriwether you could have given me some warning you were coming home yeah, it was kind of a last minute decision, Mom. Sorry. Well, is everything okay? Merry weather. And that question, I think, is that it's a very simple one. 
but the sincerity of it and the warmth and familiarity of her mother's voice kind of breaks Meriwether down and she drops her luggage and just sort of in an instant collapses into her mother's arms sobbing and on that night she can't exactly say what she wants to say which is that she couldn't make it out there it's it's just too hard and there's no real way to know if you're a good performer or a good artist or a good person or whether it's worth trying there's no real way to know who you are and how does anybody do it how does anyone live with themselves she can't say anything at all through the tears so for the rest of the evening uh, with Meriwether unconsolable her mother just holds her and reads her poetry and strokes her hair and serves her tea and she doesn't ask any questions she doesn't ask why she um just gives Meriwether what she needs which is not answers or platitudes but softness. Thank you. <laughs> Who else has a verse for a, a response to this verse? Uh, yeah, I can go. So I think maybe as as Dr. Quiz lying on the sofa, listening to the cats yowling underneath in Patricia's apartment, he closes his eyes and once again, um, he's 21 years old in Greater Cottage University Hospital, uh, a junior doctor, and it's been one hell of a night. Um, diseases related to gods and saints can be very hard to predict. They can be potentially lethal on a good night when there are lots of patients coming in. You can save maybe seven out of 10, maybe six out of 10. This has been a bad night. He's lost nine. And so Dr. Raymond Quick just sits there, listening to the rain hammering down against the windows in front of him. And his hands, which are covered in the blood of the people he's been unable to help, are shaking. And he sits there, just all of him just trembling. And then suddenly a very firm hand just grasps his wrist. He looks up and his brother Eric is sitting alongside him and wordlessly Eric just takes out a, a disinfectant cloth and just cleans the blood off Raymond's hands one by one. And Raymond looks up at his brother and he just, he says, Eric, how can you stand it? How can you always be so, so kind, so cut stand patient? How can you stand it when the world is so cruel? And Eric just looks back at him with that infuriatingly saintly smile and says, because I can bear the weight, Raymond, because I can bear the weight. Agreeing to all of B's reactions to these verses. <laughs> I can't help it. It's poetry every time. I love hearing everyone's verses. You get my asses. Um, and we'll, we'll see if uh, we'll see if I can compare. But so I think from the hospital in Glottage and the rain, we go to Zeph in the car in that same sort of gloomy weather. He is driving off and there is blood on his hands from not patients, but the contraband meat that he still has in the back that he is yet to do anything with it'll probably get kicked out on the road later he's not thinking about that right now he's fiddling with the radio with his free hand and i'm sure his his companion custodians will be displeased in the state he's left the van by the time he brings it back but he's not even like staying on the stations long enough to hear anything he's hearing just like snippets of words and it's making these incomprehensible sentences and then suddenly we're in an apartment and he's maybe 12 and he's doing the same thing with the radio and from another room you can hear yelling there are adults fighting 
and he turns it up and they get louder and he turns it up again. And then he starts actually fiddling with it because he swears he hears a word. He swears he hears maybe something else talking to him. It's, it's not, he can't quite get it. And every time he switches it, there is just this soft voice whispering. And it's comforting. It's quiet. It's calm. And he stays up all night listening to that and turning it up a little louder every time the people next door get a little louder. Love that scene. Thank you. Um, Bastion. <laughs> yeah, so I think we see um, Bastion um, as a boy, probably 13, 14. Um, his, he's covered sort of um, from head to toe in mud. Um, uh, the, the, um, it's raining, um, which has cleared some of it off of him, but um, he's still just a um, a wet, muddy mess um, as he um, ducks um, into um, uh, sort of underneath uh, the arch of a viaduct to um, take some shelter um, as the uh, the rain continues to sort of pound down into the the earth around him. Um, you can see kind of underneath the 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 the, the mud and the the rainwater um there are also tears his eyes are kind of um uh, red rimmed um and in his um uh clutched in his um hand um is a scrap of sodden um paper um which you can just make out still um as the ink's running um, a kind of like missing um, uh, banner headline um, and the picture um, of his own face um, and his brothers staring back out at him. Um, and he kind of drops it into the um, onto the ground at his feet um, and reaches sort of into the, the, the pack he's got on his back um, and pulls out um, a perfectly clean um, uh, human skull, which he just kind of cradles um, in his arms, and there's just a slight greenish glow um, uh, that brightens up in the um, uh, in the eyes of the skull that are um, sort of that is that cold greenish light, but it still seems to give him some sort of warmth and comfort. Yeah, very comforting, amazing. <laughs> uh, bringing back that uh, item from session one, I think, right? Maybe. So cool. As always, I guess we'll continue after these verses. They're so good. Stand alone. But uh, let's jump back to the other characters for a minute. Um, I, I do want to add for Meriwether, um, at some point, I think I just want to ask you, Elle, at some point uh, when you wake up, you have that condition blighted where that fungal god had bitten you basically and you notice that it's getting worse over time um how's it gotten worse uh i think she wakes up coughing and this little like kind of goopy clump sort of falls out from from her throat um almost like an owl pellet kind of made of the the fibers the most fibrous parts of what she um ate yesterday um but like sort of connected together by these sort of strange like yeah fungal threads I'm just going to echo that and say that, um, you know, we see Meriwether coughs up this thing. Um, and at some point you 
very, very quickly, you hear like a rush of air, maybe beating of wings. This is maybe a little bit before dawn, but you hear sickening, wet, spilling sounds from this opening in the nest and just like chunks of of meat, um, almost like a slaughterhouse runoff pieces of meat and guts and whatever spills down through the nest, spattering both of you and cousin kind of like pulls off his blankets and goes, Oh, it's time to eat. And then kind of goes and starts just like picking through and, and just eating and, um, and expecting you like, Oh, you must be hungry too. This is, we get the good parts and starts picking through for the organs and stuff like baby birds. Um, uh, <laughs> Before that, though, uh, in our loose sense of time, Zeph still has to get away or do something about this security vehicle that is now pursuing you. Um, yeah, what do you what do you do here? Yeah. So let me double check um, moves to see if I can cause problems on purpose. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. I don't think okay so I took inspired circuitry I don't think that would work um I think I'm gonna try to out drive them mm -hmm. um and I don't really care about them as a person so like if they crash mm -hmm. they crash mm -hmm. um I think that I'm it's a little Mario Kart, uh, but I'm a, I'm considering throwing out an item I have, like <laughs> the rusted tools, like to see mm -hmm. if I can pop their tires. Nice. I know that's like yeah. a wild like attempt, but it's great. behind me, out the window, and then mm -hmm. get the hell out because I really don't want to confront this person. It's I have Zeph has one move and it's get out, dip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, Sounds great. What do I yeah. want for that? Um, <laughs> gosh, I, I think vit well, could be vitality or focus since it's sort of like, you know, you're still driving, you're trying to like mm -hmm. pay attention. It kind of, uh, it's up to you. Well, I've got a one in focus, so I'll take that. Okay. Um, and I'm definitely throwing the rusted tools out the side. So I will mark that as yeah I, I won't have those anymore even if this doesn't work <laughs> i think you would be a disadvantage here because of the situation and being oh yeah pursued yeah so yes. this makes it a flat roll yeah fabulous <laughs> i'll accept a flat roll oh i should oh, go ahead yeah. oh no please please tell me oh tell me uh, setting the stakes obviously uh what are you afraid might happen here this will be the the failed move um be caught arrested we mentioned anything yes. different I'm, I am afraid that I will be caught and arrested and no longer able to pursue my own goals. Right. So, yeah, you know, personal goals. Yeah. Pers my personal goals. Great. Sorry. What was your role? I saw that it. Oh, no, it's, a, it's a nine. Okay. Not bad. Huh. Um, so, with a nine, you will be able to, yeah, slow them down with these tools. There's definitely some spiky things in there maybe a chain or two gets tangled in their tires um but i think it's the the complication if you uh if you want to go through with this is just that like um you're gonna have to i think like spend some time away you're gonna have to like get out of town um as yes. far as this is gonna draw <laughs> enough attention it's gonna put them on alert other people are gonna come looking for this this van um <laughs> sketchy white vehicle. van lurking around yeah yeah no i'm gonna get the hell out of town honestly like i and i feel like since i dropped bastion off to do this other thing i i feel, i don't want to like go bother him and his whole thing he's doing mm -hmm. um it seems like he had that covered and so uh and clearly i'm no help to Meriwether, so i'm gonna go bother the good doctor um that's my that i was i'm like well they can't follow me yeah. that far, right? They won't do that. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Whether that actually happened, Zeph could be well, completely delusional about that. No, I think that's yeah. You go through that. You you will be able to like 
delay them enough. And this is, we've established rural back roads. You can, they, they're not going to catch up to you anytime soon um, or be bothered to, they're going to have to deal with that van. Um, yeah. Excellent. Um, we'll, we'll have you two meet maybe in the next scene. That'd be fun. Um, so Bastion, um, back in Alm, um, Ellison Hunter, the mayor, you can't really tell if like, this is one of those, like no one else is doing it. So they're, they're the mayor de facto, or they've just nominated themselves or, or what it's not much of a town to speak of, but they're very friendly. They're clearly trying to like improve the, the image of this town. And they'll introduce you to another uh, trucker um, named uh, Deal McCulley. Um, <clears throat> it, as far as like, if you're looking for, for places you can stay, um, I think there's some very, very basic sort of like um, overnight lodging, you know, truckers needing to, to crash for a few hours, um, not a full, full motel or anything. Uh, sorry, Dale, not Deal. Dale McCulley has this well-worn jacket um he's chewing chewing on a toothpick and he's got the uh the hat that has like the fadings ferry and freight uh logo on it and um yeah it's like oh need a need a place to stay need a ride out of town um i'm heading out in the morning um just a place to stay if that's all right i think um i might hang around the town a little bit longer um i've you know, so just to say, Richard, I've only I've only just arrived. Um, sure, but yeah, a place to stay would be great. Sure, yeah, um, yeah. It's um, not all folks around here. We're kind of normally there's more drivers. We're starting to run out, honestly. And uh, husband keeps telling me I should quit. He's kind of I think he's kind of getting nervous. With you probably heard about missing missing truckers and stuff. So you know, be careful out there. Um, I. I was just saying to the uh, uh, to the mayor to Ellison that I um, I saw a truck um, on my way in that looked um, looked to have gone off the road. Uh, the driver wasn't there, but um, yeah, I think I think at that point, like he's oh shit, it's off the road. Um, that's got to be a. Uh... Sorry, I don't have a side character name in hand here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Things like I, I was supposed to meet up with with Ale, uh, but I th he's gonna, I think, basically want to go check this out. Um, which you can let him leave and do that, or you can go with him. Um, I I guess I can head back uh, head back out with you if you're um, if you want to go and take a look around, um, show you where it is. Sure, oh, I I appreciate it. Um, yeah, like you know, we're we were supposed to trade off. Um, was expecting him back. Been kind of anxious, honestly. Not sure what was happening. So um, he'll kind of lead you to a pickup and hop in, um, and go go back looking um, along the road here. Um, let's see here. I think along the way. <clears throat> you notice that um. There's just a weirdness to this like emptiness and wilderness around the town. You notice that um Dale here kind of starts to like it's friendly enough, but starts to drift off as far as um conversation kind of just pauses, takes take some effort to get his attention back. He kind of seems to be spacing out, just kind of like paying attention to this weird open sky and electric pylons and mist. So it's uh you're getting that sense of losing time, losing track of where you are a little bit. Awesome, yeah. Um, I probably will sort of try and ask him, like, you know, what's if he's got any idea what's been going on around here, that sort of thing as we drive. But I I won't you know bother him too much. Yeah, I think if you pull his attention back. Can make uh make an information move here sure with presence
Uh, that is a 10 again. Nice. Um, great, we'll come back to that for a clue. And um, let's see, Dr. Quick, um, is there anything else you, again, uh, you could poke around at night, you could say you're doing things, things the next morning. Yeah, so I think it's yeah. not particularly helpful for the assignment, but I think Dr. Quick waking up with his brother in his mind is probably mm -hmm. going to feel that he has a duty to complete what his brother started here. So mm -hmm. I think he's going to stay, hang around Patricia's uh, apartment in the morning and just help her out with tasks. So I'm gunning for trying to get rid of clearer condition here. Oh, uh, nice. I yeah. think, you know, she might have some repairs that need doing, but I think crucially he's picked up on the fact that she said, Eric helped her with her cats getting stuck on the roof. Uh, and what he does is he finds, um, I think it's rye, isn't it? It's the, the herb that cats uh, are deterred by. So maybe he finds some of that in a, in her window boxes or in a neighbor's window box. Mm -hmm. And he just kind of plants it up near the drain pipes to stop the cats from getting onto the roof uh, to oh, try nice. and help her. Love that. Yeah, so that just uh, mechanically lets you clear condition which which are you going to clear? I think I'll just I'll go for the first one I got, which is the mold spores. So I think maybe yeah. uh, as he kind of like looks looks up at his handiwork, Doctor Quick feels a little bit enlivened, a little bit more clear headed than he uh, he has in a long while. Yeah, the fresh air up here and these all these herbs and flowers is actually actually quite nice. Uh, at some point, um, you know, Patricia will come up with with more tea. Again, just massive mugs of tea. Um, but we'll say, uh, you, you have a, a friend here uh, for you, dear. A um, friend of yours dri drives a van. Um, seems to be in a bit of a hurry. Um, but I don't know. I just thought I'd check with you first. If you look down, uh, I think we see Zef has somehow caught up with you here. I he should be very annoyed with you for abandoning me. But would you like a cup of tea? You seem to have done perfectly fine. Yes, please. <laughs> There's like, he's like wiped the blood off of his hands before he got out, but he's not like clean. He still like, looks like he trapes through the woods, probably not with any skill. Um, and there's still like a little bit of blood on the back of the vein. He didn't try to clean that, but um, the, 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 the meat is like dropped out. He dropped it somewhere just completely on the side of the road, but uh, he didn't clean anything but he will skitter up. <laughs> That's great. Uh, I, mean, I can give Zeph like a little pat on the shoulder and be like, you look dreadful. <laughs> what the hell happened to you? I, I could say the same thing to you, my friend. Don't worry about it. Things are fine. It's fine. I'll tell you later. <laughs> um, yeah, I think Patricia was kind of, you know, uh, it's like, well, let, let me know if you need anything, Eric. Um, I'm, I'm going to just, Take a little break. Take take a little nap on the on the balcony here. There's the sun's quite nice. And thank you so much for your help. Just I really don't know how to thank you enough. It's so helpful every time you've come by. Kind of walks. Absolute out. pleasure, mm -hmm. Patricia. Uh, Zeph, don't say a word. My name is Eric. As long as I'm here, my name is Eric. Okay, do you understand? Of course, of course, of course. Thank you so much for. Uh... For, for giving me some tea. I, it was lovely to run into my friend Eric here. I had no idea he'd be hosted by such a, a, a lovely woman. Such a charming young man. Thank you so much. So kind. Um, help yourself if you need more tea. Um, you know. And, and he just mouths at Dr. Quick. <laughs> just, let's, let's sit and have our tea, shall we? Uh, my dear friend, Zeph. Of course. So, <laughs> how have things been going for you? <clears throat> well, um, they've been going. I had to take a little break from uh, the project I was going to help our friend Merriweather on. Uh, she seems to, um, she probably has it handled, but I had to, I had to take a quick uh, sojourn. And I thought I'd come see you. What uh, about it's, you? It's... How have you been? Ah, uh, not, not great. The, the floating market was quite stressful. Um, is, is, is Bastian alive? Is he okay? 
Oh, he's alive. He's very, um, he's very alive. I dropped him off somewhere. He's uh, on a different assignment. He wanted to go it alone, uh, do some hitchhiking. I don't know why he does these things. Uh, it, it seemed, he seemed very comfortable doing it. I don't know. Fine. Well, listen, we've got to somehow find our way into these warehouses and find where this, this harvest god is, this one that's causing all the trouble. Now, the workers seem to bed down here at night. There's not really much of a social life here in this part of town. So I would certainly welcome your thoughts and counsel. We could try and sneak in. We could divide our forces. Perhaps we could try and I don't know, pretend to be official inspectors. You're the one who's got the gift of the gab, Zef, so maybe you can advise. I mean, I'm not sure. I've seen you talk your way out of things. I think you do fabulously. Um, oh, thank you. That's quite Yes, nice. yes. No, I, I think that together we could probably, I don't know how much security there is. I'd have to look. Um, because, if there, because if there's security, I don't think we should just sneak in. They will see, unless, unless you would like me to try to disable it. Because I could try. That's a point, isn't it? I mean, you are a, an electrician, uh, you yes. know, uh, so totally obviously right this, this place does not have a lot of power. Maybe I could be your humble assistant and we could try and inveigle our way in that way. I Yes, I think so. You know, I, I'm i sure they would love a visit from official, uh, of, officials of the St. Electric to... Help upgrade some of their equipment. Excellent. Sounds like a, a great plan. Let's cut there. Um, come back to that. Um, Meriwether kind of left you in this nest here and agree in our chat. Hard to say that's a bad thing, you know, aside from the, the viscera and everything. But um, uh, at some point, <laughs> yeah, at some point, well, what's your next move here? I think Cousin is like, well, she, I should get some of this back. Baby needs to eat. And some of this soft, soft meat's better for baby. Less chewy. It's like, um, sister says I should, I should be helping out some more. So I think, I think, yeah, I think baby, baby would be happy to to have a, a, a little treat. I think holds up. I don't know, get too gory about it, but you know, entrails, organs, whatever, some particularly soft uh, piece of meat. Yeah, Meriwether, I think, feels a little bit disgusted with herself that she's not more disgusted at this point. Like, she's she's getting used to it. This is cousin. That's me. That's food. That's, it's all right. Mm. Um, I think she'll nod and say, yeah, okay. Um, cousin, I think I, I need to get to a, a doctor. So you take care of, of sister and baby and don't forget about me, okay? I'm going to be back. Oh, okay. Um, be, be careful out there, I, I guess. Um, you know, be, I, I, brother probably wants wants to make sure you're safe. Make sure you come back for dinner. They always they always say come back in time for dinner. Don't stay out after dark. You saw what happened. Thankfully, mother found us. Um, but it, it was nice. It was nice. Thank thank you for for coming to my fort. I might need some help re building it and he's starting to remember how it was starting to sink into the swamp but you'll go your own ways if you want um yeah wh uh, where would you like to go as far as so i think find someone to help you yeah i think the first thing meriwether does because she thinks zeph is still in weft like she heard his mm -hmm. voice she saw that he had a van <laughs> it's like mm -hmm. parked on the edge of the woods so she's going into weft looking for you know looking for signs of Zeph, looking for the van, asking around. And she probably looks completely insane, right? Like she has stumbled out of the woods. She's got like twigs and stuff in her hair, like whatever from the nest. She's like partially covered in viscera that she like kind of tried to wipe off. But, you know, there's still like the sort of port wine stain of blood over one side of her face. Mm -hmm. And she's just like asking around if anyone has seen someone of Zeph's description. I think as you're you're asking around, I think um, Cletus, who you met before, spots you and comes up to you, and just kind of looking you over. Um, would your do you think your sort of affliction would be visible, um, or is that kind of covered up? 
but it's not really I'm, important just for description. I'm thinking that it's mostly internal, but like okay. you can tell that she's not well. Like she's really pale, maybe like clammy. Um, she doesn't look like a healthy person, I think, at this point. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, I think that um, Dennis, uh, sorry, not Dennis, um, Cletus kind of sees you and, and it's almost kind of like Cox, Cox his head a little bit and look, looks at you oddly like, oh, you not looking too good friend um like you've been out out in the woods where you shouldn't be out a little too long you better come with me um i i got a one of my neighbors i think could help we we need to we need, need to have something um maybe get a good meal in you or something and it's gonna invite you back to um to their porch um looks looks a little bit worried at your appearance and we'll call up a friend um who um yeah it's it's a humble porch it's humble humble town um there's a kind of beaten up rocking chair that's like you need to sit down i'll get you some water um <clears throat> you uh you hear a conversation like maybe on the phone and a uh few minutes later you hear uh, a motorcycle and you see um pulling up some kind of probably vintage motorcycle or other um a woman with windswept gray hair kind of takes off the helmet um white scarf um you know, black leather jacket and uh the travel bags on the motorcycle prominently feature the pox martyrs crest i don't know what that looks like i don't know if uh dr quick has anything similar but this is another uh pox monk um who seems to be sort of like the best equivalent of like you know the this community's like traveling doctor kind of steps up to you and looks you over and it's like Cletus here seemed to be uh scared to death my friend what's what's ailing you anything I could help with oh we yeah, yeah you've been bit. I'm uh I'm fine. I'm I'm looking for a friend, actually. Um, and I think Meriwether's like not even able to get out the the last part of her sentence is another one of those uh yeah. fungal balls of oh no phlegm <laughs> yeah comes up. Um she's like, Oh, don't say no more. In fact, maybe just no offense, ma'am, but but if you can keep your mouth closed for the moment, uh, we can we can take care of this. I just need a to get a sense of things if you don't mind. She's gonna like rest a hand on your shoulder and like try to sense what's going on with you. Um we can come back to that. I'm not sure if uh I have ideas for how you could clear a condition here. Um, but this could also be a different move if you're interested. Sure. Yeah, that's if you have any of your own it. moves you want to trigger, yeah. All right. Um, so back to Bastion. You were making an information move, right? Uh, that's right. Yep. Yep. Um, and remind me, were you just just through conversation or just observing? Okay. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, just chatting to um to to Dale as we were um yeah driving out of town. Sounds good. Did you make the roll or did we cut before? That? I did. I got a ten. Oh, ten. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. So um. So then you were just asking about like recent events, right? That's it. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. So with the full 10. Um yeah, I think I think Dale mentions um because now you know. Our friend back there, um, Ellison. Um, you know, it's great. We need we need a mayor, we need someone to help out, kind of soul you can meet. But between you and me, uh, I think they've been they've been trying awfully hard to save this town. More and more, they don't want to let on how many folks just aren't coming back. And uh I think basically the clue is like I, I did some looking around. Um 
some some with that town hall hasn't been sitting sitting right with me and uh you know i think uh we've, we had visitors going missing there as well um so the the clue that clue is evidence of uh worship of the bowered companion in the town hall um I, th I think uh, he says, like, now, they were talking about fixing it up and having meetings again and everything, which sounds great, but I peeked in there. It's completely empty. There's some, uh, I think, pulls out, like, an old um, an old lantern. That's what I'll say the evidence is. It looks like an antique lantern, um, which is sort of, the, the sides of the glass are sort of stained with soot. Um, I don't know what that means. I'm not one to jump to conclusions, but some's not sitting right there. Maybe, maybe we'll see something else here. Might might help us put this picture together. Um, what brings you to our town anyway, though? Um, kind of still trying to to make sense of you, this like random hitchhiker. I'm the destination. Um. I think uh, I think this is sort of the time for the reveal, and I think I say uh, I should be um, honest with you. I'm actually here. Uh, I'm a custodian, and we heard reports about the disappearances, so I'm here, um, looking around, seeing if uh, if we can get to the bottom of this. As well, I don't know if I've heard much about about custodians, but. About time someone cared. Someone came to to see what's happening here. Let um, I think with a ten, I'm going to say that they will. Um, they're going to swing by. Um, a shack along the way, just to like get some supplies, and that'll be a new like location that we can look at on the way. Maybe more opportunities there. Um, said, well, you don't look well supplied to me. You don't. You're just uh, out here on the road by yourself. Maybe let me see if I have anything I can that can help us. Um, you know, uh, with this miss. It's easy to get lost around here, and I don't want don't want anyone else getting lost. Uh, let's cut back to Zeph and and Doctor Quick. Uh, it sounds like there was a scheme happening here. Uh, sounds like Zeph is leading it as member of the the faith electric or or just a repairman um i'm gonna know. do my best um <laughs> so uh i like in media res i think we like mm -hmm. cut back there's they're still awkwardly at this table with the tea and like zeph doesn't know how to get out of here smoothly because this is dr quick's situation and he's like so is there like have you observed a schedule like a guard schedule or have you just been hanging out with this this uh lovely woman uh well i i did find out something quite useful about an old uh herbal tea god they used to worship in these parts but no i have not had time to observe the guard schedule um i mean yes. we need to announce ourselves to the guards though correct we can just go in and say hello we're here to do a job uh I, of course, will play your humble assistant, Steve, uh, a man of the people, you know, rough and ready. I can do Why that. Why do you keep changing the neck, your Eric? Well, it's, you, it's like you don't need a second one. I, 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 I can't play the part of Eric. Uh, oh. No, uh, Steve will work quite well, okay. I think. All right, Steve, it is. <clears throat> we can we can do that. Um, I don't have a fake name. Uh, you. Should Why I do you need a fake name? Why do you need a fake name? Well, I, if I say my name is Dr. Raymond Quick, then obviously they know I can possibly be a handy person's assistant. <laughs> How ludicrous is that? <laughs> ludicrous. I could never just call you Raymond. That would be ludicrous. So we'll just, we can just go there and we're, um, you are a, a, a journeyman, my assistant, and we are here to upgrade their facility. That's right, sir. Of the St. Electric. Um... And we'll just go from there. All right, young master, you lead on then. 
So we'll cut to the, um, Patricia will point out where those lights were coming from. It's um, you come to the warehouse exterior, three stories tall, weathered concrete. It's layered in graffiti and vines. Uh, there's a chain link fence around the outside. Notably, the gutters and windows seem most recently repaired, even though everything else seems pretty, pretty ruined. And wildflowers are peeking from weeds on the roof. This is a paint the scene for everyone. Um, it's pretty broad. What was this building originally used for? What efforts have been made to conceal its current purpose? I think perhaps at one time it was a gathering place for the followers of Big Herb. Oh, sure. Uh, and there's still um, a big, uh, like, mural or, like, painting of Big Herb's smiling face with its bushy green beard and mustache. That's funny. It's probably not too old as far as that mural goes from the sound of it. It's just been sort of repurposed. And I think that they've blacked out the windows um, or attempted to. It's not super thorough, but because you can still kind of see light coming from inside, but it's hard to see inside. Uh, I imagine, so it sounds like there's kind of lots of uh, unnaturally fast plant growth here. So I imagine they've let lots of nettles and thistles and brambles grow up all around the uh, the warehouse, creating a kind of natural barricade to prevent interlopers from getting in. Oh, nice, yeah. Yeah, and I think um, kind of up around the edges of the windows and just maybe over some of the brickwork and stuff in general, um, you can see there's sort of um, like, um, um, you know, plaster filler stuff has been pasted over fairly recently you can see even still like tendrils of green are trying to poke out from inside um the building but they're kind of trying to cover it up to to hide the fact that it's um that there is stuff being grown in here currently nice um you don't see any guards from the outside you do see you know um warehouse doors so uh, some kind of sheet metal um seems to be the most clear but you know like it's actually being used as a passage maybe are they open or closed oh they're closed yeah i think it's open the door if you yeah, want yeah so, yeah straight up like seth looks around and just knocks like he's supposed to be there <laughs> yeah um door the uh, here lock lock open kind of swings open and a little bit of confused looking um looking man in gray overalls, his hair's kind of back in braids, um, kind of like uh, has like a, like the gator, like the bandana that could be pulled up as a mask. Um, combat boots, uh, definitely dressed for work, kind of looks at you as, uh, I don't, looks back like, you're, you're here, uh, trainees were supposed to come tomorrow. Um, no, 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 no. And uh, he holds up this box of it's 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 like clearly branded by the Saint Electric and it's consecrated electrician's tools, which I got from my other like my new move. And it looks really like official. Um, and it's like, oh, no, 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 no. We're uh, we're contractors uh, here on behalf of the Faith Electric. Are you the one in charge here or they didn't tell us who to look for. They just told us to come out here. Oh, and he's like, oh, no, um, contract. Okay. Uh, do you have, uh, and you see it's, he's like trying to remember like what he should be saying in this sort of like, oh, do you, do you have ID, I guess? Um, and he's like, <laughs> oh, it's, oh, right, right. Sure. Um, just for fun, let's do the veiled move here just to see how it goes. Absolutely. Please. And we have a, obviously a pretty good ruse here. I'm just checking if you have conditions oh, that would. I, I mean, I do have conditions. <laughs> I'm trying to think if uh, I feel like pursued. You might be still a little bit ragged. 
I probably don't, don't look awesome. for no. Yeah. So that, that could be a disadvantage. Uh, but if you have equipment, you're marking, whatever, um, that could even it out. I don't know. I'm not going to mark equipment for this unless, uh, sure. Dr. Quick is real worried about it. Um, you know, things that could go you wrong here, this. obviously. Yeah. They, they don't buy it. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's absolutely what I'm worried about. Sure. Let's sure. See. And, and this will be presence probably yeah wait yeah am i at a disadvantage you're right i'm at a disadvantage i gotta roll another one. Oh no hold on hold on <laughs> so five <laughs> five total <laughs> five i yeah i'm uh is it with presence because it is five mm -hmm. total yeah five total <laughs> yeah <laughs> kind of looks quizzically at um you know uh dr quick here and kind of back you and like upgrades um no 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 this is um kind of looks a little more standoffish like no we've got things handled here this is a self-contained um system here um we've already we've already had our inspection this year everything's above board if you want to make an expect a uh, full inspection um you have to talk to to haven here and i think actually you hear someone approaching it's like oh yep yeah, my boss is here um fabulous yeah, I don't, I don't, I think you must've got the wrong address or something. No. Haven walks up. Someone strangely in a clean suit, fresh undercut. Their hair is just looking fantastic. Not like they're in the middle of a grow warehouse. And just says, uh, inspection. No, no, we're all set here, friends. Um, you must've got the wrong address. I know it's, it's a bit of a startup here, you know. We haven't really finished our expansion, um, but you must be looking for what? Where are you looking for? You're in the wrong place, friend. Are you sure? I listen. We are we are contractors with Faith Electric, and I mean, just looking at your building, I can tell you need a bit of an upgrade. You can always use a bit of an upgrade. You know, a little bit of a boost. He's he knows his lie is not working, and he is <laughs> yeah. sticking to it so hard. <laughs> He does occasionally look at Dr. Quick like. Okay, I'm going to. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Quick, if if you're happy, Zeph might try a Hail Mary since we failed here. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to start like a slow clap. like, <laughs> And that is exactly <laughs> the correct response when someone without the proper identification <laughs> attempts to enter the premises. Very well done. Very well done. Uh, allow me to take off the mask. I am, of course, Dr. Raymond Quick. Uh, we are, in fact, working. This is my my colleague working with the Church of the Grinding Lord. Uh, of course, you would know your superiors uh, in the industry. And we were indeed conducting an inspection, but not a safety inspection, but rather a security inspection. It was our job to ensure that no intruders or interlopers could make their way into this facility. And <laughs> I think we did rather trick your colleague there for a second, didn't we? We did trick you, yes, we did. Real close, but you did it still. That was very good. I'm giving both of you an A plus for that. Thank you. Just write it down, yes. Yeah. Uh, that's funny. Oh uh, yeah, and no, I think this would this would be another roll. <laughs> so um, good. But yeah, no, that's great. Um, give me a second here. Uh, yeah, another role with presence. Um, still veiled move because we haven't established directly that you're dealing with the divine yet. Um, is there any other um, particular move that you're triggering here, John? Uh, there's no, I, I can't think of a through. way that a plushie or a cat mug would help me see yeah. our official here. So, <laughs> no, sure. I, just, I mean, if you had a hawk smarter move or something, I wasn't sure if there's anything different, I'm but otherwise, not. fair enough. Yeah, I'm afraid not. So yeah, I don't have any presence, so that's just a flat roll, I guess, unless I've got disadvantage. Um, looking at conditions, no, I don't, I don't think so. I think your others, unless you're, uh, no, I don't think your parasitic stuff is manifesting anything currently. So yeah. Okay, let's see how this goes. Uh, that's a six. Oh no. <laughs> I think with a six. Um, Haven kind of gives you this both of you this quick calculated look and it's like there's like a beat and it's like of course the grinding lord um, we are um, you know again startup operation here but uh, we can't wait to get um, 
to expand to include the latest, uh, the sort of crossover of the grinding board psychotropic blends. Um, we're actually uh, developing some new, um, uh, well, I'll give you a first look. I can't really talk about it yet. It's not really official, but I think you best uh, come on in. I'll show you, show you the facility. It's really state of the art here. Um, uh, I think you'd be quite impressed with what we're doing and we'll lead you to the grow room. Um, uh, where um, it's full of these flowering vines, potted shrubs, just floor to ceiling on the shelves, this explosion of greenery, these dazzling overhead bulbs. It's said, oh, quite something, isn't it? Take a look. And before you even really get to fully like taking what's happening here, the color, the um, intensity of these blooms, the, the petals, um, um, you find yourself entranced almost uh, and you kind of back of your mind remembering something that the that lady what was her name that lady that you knew that was your friend um, she was talking about her flowers changing color with the lights and um, you both find yourself kind of mesmerized um, sort of like a mood ring the color shifting back and forth of these flowers just kind of drawing you closer and closer in um i didn't really set the stakes for anything worse than that but you're kind of led to the grow room and you hear the doors kind of click behind you but that's not too important it's so beautiful here maybe you should just kind of rest a little while just take in the sights it smells so wonderful well, what do you think b is this do we roll <laughs> with it or do we do i write a verse i mean we're not dead yet so i'm down with either Stakes weren't, yeah, like, you're going to die. It's just sort of, uh, <laughs> you're brought into danger. Oh, I thought you were saying, oh, we're you're going to die. Don't worry. Oh, don't worry. We'll get there. No. <laughs> you know what? We made it in. This was a resounding success. Yeah. So I'm going to roll it. was a success. We yeah. made it in. Great. We'll just figure this out. Yeah. No, sounds good. Um, Is that a condition, Gabriel, the entranced or? Um. Yeah, that's a good point. I should go back to that. Thank you. Um, let me look. I think they even had a name for it on here. Uh, yeah, these are mirror petals. Sorry? What happens if you're full up on conditions and you get another condition? Mechanically. Oh, uh, then you have to write a verse, actually. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Because yeah. I am. Yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, we we can we can write a verse instead there that that's fair um because it's gonna push you that way anyway um think about what you want to do yeah um I can give you more context for how that will play out if you want um I'm curious what's going on with Merriweather though with this other pox monk um kind of getting ready to help you out treat you um any thoughts oh like uh you're you know could get some information out of this situation if, if we wanted to approach it that way or we could try to clear this this ailment that you have um i think i definitely want to get some info out of this situation i'm wondering mm -hmm. if we take a quick break oh yeah thank you let's do that um let's take a five minute break think about what's next cool awesome Okay, so we left off with Meriwether and you're being uh, treated by a pox monk, presumably, but I was wondering if you wanted to, you know, try to learn more about this situation as a whole, if you wanted to treat this as an information move somehow or um, find a way to clear a condition here. What do you think, El? Yeah, um, I definitely want some info. I think, yeah. I think we see Meriwether being treated by, sorry, what's the Pox Monk's name? Sister Quarrel. Sister Quarrel. Um, as I described her before, like Meriwether looks, um, you know, pale. She's always skinny, but like if possible, it looks like she's lost 10 pounds since like mm -hmm. yesterday. Um, and she's not wearing her anorak, I think. She doesn't know where it is. Maybe she left it on the ranch with her family. Mm -hmm. um, but as 
the pox monk is seeing her. I imagine there's like a tongue depressor sort of thing going on, looking down her throat. Um, Meriwether is like, is is this sort of thing common around here? I mean, nice. Um, yeah, let's do an information move there. Um, it, I mean, could be presence, could be vitality even because we're kind of focused on your physical condition here up to you i know presence probably easier for you though i think i'd rather it be yeah, yeah <laughs> if yeah. it's up to me yeah yeah it sounds good um any of my conditions let me look real quick um no i don't i don't think so in this context i think you're good okay Ooh, that's 12. Okay, nice. Um, yeah, I th <laughs> I think as a bonus here, that's easy for me. We're gonna say if you would like to clear this condition, you can clear blighted because you're literally being treated. Um I think she says, Oh, more more common than you'd expect. Um kinds of things under the under the ground here. It's remarkable what folks learn to live with. Um, and let me just check our other clues real quick, because um, I think this could be a conspiracy clue here. Just make sure I don't repeat myself. Um, yeah, the clue says something about these woods. Um, some that logging company got up to or some kind of fertilizer. I don't know, but there's things, things haven't been right here. Things are growing weird. Uh, I mean, not the first I've found um, harboring uh, interesting hosts like this. And I think, um, I think she kind of rolls back a sleeve and shows she's already taken on a similar blessing, a similar, um, uh maybe it looks a bit like that tree trunk uh where before you saw that the the under the bark of the tree was like weird sinew and muscle tissue and her flesh of her arm looks like it's it's healing but it's knotted it's kind of like somewhere in between um rotting uh wood grain and and mushrooms um uh but the clue is that uh that plant life is strange plant life here is thriving where it shouldn't be possible. I think she says, um, yeah, one of these, um, she'll, she tells you how, um, I treated this, uh, those folks who's working at uh, Hopworth industries, the meat packing plant, there's some kind of chemical spill. And even though it was, causing all kinds of, of harm and wounds kind of shows you another um, like burn that she's got on the other arm you know, right in the middle of it plants growing right back up um, plants I've never seen before kind of strange strange if you ask me uh, something else something else afoot here that uh, beyond me that I could take on myself I think uh, you might not find this place to be the same for very long. I think it's it's going through its own growth and healing. And sometimes that that involves decay and regrowth. And I'm just glad that I could be here to take on this blessing from you. It's an honor. I should give you a regular clue too, sorry. Um, but that is a conspiracy clue. Oh. Um, strange plant uh, growth. Plant life thriving where it should not be possible. And I'll come back to you for the regular clue as well. Oh. Yeah, actually, no, I got it. Because she was talking about fertilizer. I think that the clue is um, is weird fertilizer um, that, that she saw as part of the chemical spill. Um, she says that, yeah, what's... I think they're trying to get things to grow faster than they would like, but they, they ought to. And there's always the consequences of those things. Something's got to fill the void. I guess it's this creature. 
this being. So, okay, we have Bastion on the road, um, stopping by another location as part of your other um, success with your other role. Um, one second. So this is an abandoned shack, essentially. But it looks like um, it's been used to kind of just store supplies. Um, sorry, one second. An abandoned shack, one of the many scattered throughout the forests along the Whisper Plains. This looks like it's a home that's just been suddenly vacated, actually. So, um, um, Dale kind of like pulls over, invites you to kind of stop through and, and just see if there's anything you need for the road. Um, just kind of, they, they seem to be taking pity on you here. <laughs> um, a little concern for your safety and, um, I think, an odd thing that you might notice as you step inside here is it looks like um it looks like other people have been camping here actually. So um there's camping gear, there's a burned out lantern. Um similar to what you've already found, there's like a map with some strange scribbles on it. Um yeah, I think as a bonus, if you would like to add any basic like camping gear, or you can even just put camping gear. In your altar and, and fill that in later we can leave that open yeah that sounds good actually yeah i like the idea of just taking sort of some some general general camping gear um, yeah yeah he says you know you know just I, i'd hate to i just i'd feel terrible if you got lost and never, never even though we just met wouldn't want anyone else vanishing like that it's just too many folks already and who knows having the right thing at the right time could make all the difference Thanks. It's um, it can get uh, it can get lonely out on the uh, on the road. Sometimes I know that that well enough, but um, it's uh, always good to meet a uh, a friendly face, um, and they'll kind of smile but say, um, "I hope you're we can find your colleague. Um, at least find out what's what's happened to them." Um, yeah, and I think as you're talking, um, he's kind of like checking the kitchen, just like for some extra food and stuff, um, an extra lantern. It's like just in case um, he needs to be out a little bit longer. Um, and I think if you would like to kind of continue the search with him, he's going to go back to where that um, that truck is overturned and actually head towards, just head into the woods um, to start looking. Um, we could probably do... Um, do you want to try to answer that first question at this point, or do you want to continue searching? Because you do have a handful of clues already. Yeah, I I think I'm. I think maybe. Yeah, maybe we could go for trying to answer that question. Um. Got five five clues here: a runaway is discarded backpack, soft singing drifting from the fog you know, a song you don't recognize, a bloody fissure in the earth, a trucker's paper map of the area that's heavily blacked out with spirals, and then that evidence of at least rumored worship of the Bower of Companion in the town hall with this antique lantern being there. And the, the first threshold question here is just, what's the quickest way to deal with this thing? Um, destroy this god or try to appease it? I'm I think I'm I'm probably personally more interested in going for the appeasing rather than destroying here but I'm also happy to kind of largely leave it to the dice to decide and see how we go with it um so I think I'm going to start off my uh my theory um as it were by saying that um I think that the, the one of the, the quickest way to to deal with God will be to appease it because um, the fact that we know that the god has active worshippers in the area 
uh, means that a sort of a a cooperative approach will probably be be easier to, to manage because we won't be both trying to defeat the god itself and its followers. Um, yeah. Um, so as far as clues go, would one of those clues you think be, or does anyone, sorry, does anyone else want to chime in on that before we start talking clues? How do we feel about that as an approach? I, I think that sounds amazing. I can't wait to see what comes of it. Uh, and I think, yeah, the, the clue that's been used makes perfect sense. Uh, so, yeah, I'm really happy. Yeah, are you thinking um, the, the evidence you want to... So, yeah, the evidence of worship so far. Are there any other clues that you think point to this? Um, it's a complexity two, so that would so far put you at minus one. Which um, you can just go for if you want, but I'm just... I'm going to add in the singing as well, because I think the fact that there's the, this maybe this song has something to do with the um, with the the worship of the god, um, and you know while I don't recognise it yet, yeah, maybe maybe that will that's another sign that there is a sort of other things at work here. Yeah, seems pretty straightforward. Um, that's a flat roll. If, um, unless you want to make a case for any of the other clues, I don't know if anyone else has any 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 other thoughts. I I, I say just like you suggested, keep it as a coin flip, and then um, yeah. bank the rest for later. Right, build on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that sounds good. That sounds good. Yeah, once you roll it, David, since you've been the most involved in this one, sure thing. That's a nine. All right, nice. So the answer is correct. There's going to be some sort of complication in how you work this out. Um, uh, I think that, look at that question one more time. Teasing it, yeah. I think that as uh, you're out there, I'm just going to cut forward a little bit. Um, you're there with Gail, uh, sorry, with Dale, um, who's lit a much more modern lantern. Maybe it's battery powered, actually, um, so it's an antique one. Um, and it started to kind of trace steps around where that truck was and start to go into look, peek into the woods. Um, you feel this sort of, this might be familiar to you, but you feel the most gentle sensation of like a hand on your back, just gently guiding you into the mist. Like it wants you, it's, it's welcoming you. It's been waiting for you. And you hear a snatch of that song a little bit and you kind of look over and um, you actually don't see Dale. The mist is kind of swirling around you a little bit and kind of that sensation you had before of almost a questioning of, of how much time has passed. It feels like it was seconds ago. You were both talking about the most likely place that a, you know, survivor of this truck crash may have gone to, but it could have been an hour ago and you find yourself just standing in the middle of the forest. Um, maybe there's like a distant glow. Maybe it's the moon. Maybe it's something else. Um, so that's a complication is you're, uh, you're currently lost. <laughs> um, awesome. but you're, you know, you're on the right path. No, that's good. Yeah. Uh, I think I'd like to leave it there unless anyone else has anything they'd like to do to wrap up where their character is. Um, I just check in with Zeph and uh, Dr. Quick, I guess. Are you happy with that? Um, did you want to mark a verse or did you want to roll with that? Um, I mean, I'm happy to roll with it. I'm just full up on conditions, so I don't know what that is. Mechanic. Oh, got it, got it. Yeah, if I, give I, you... I love where we're at. I think it's yeah. delightful. Let me yeah. make that very clear. Um, I think I'll leave it at because John was asking if that was a condition. I think let's leave that instead of a condition. It's more of a you're kind of in immediate danger. So uh, I'm gonna retcon that and just say that yeah, that's that's sort of the miscondition is that you're. In a closed room full of these uh, mesmerizing plants that we don't know what they do yet. 
Um, so yeah, great. Let's do end of session questions, stars and wishes, and we'll wrap it up there. So let's look at end of session questions. Um, did anyone not, I think everyone did encounter or engage with a divine presence or manifestation in some way. So feel free to mark that. Um, we did not answer, uh, resolve an assignment this session. Uh, let's go in reverse for fun with uh, with Meriwether. Did you struggle with your personal faith this session? Um, not really, unless we count in flashback in the verse. Um, but certainly not in the present. And yeah. I believe I was vulnerable with someone. Uh, yeah, sleeping, cuddling up to cousin. Yeah, that was great. Makes sense. Um, Zeth, did you deliver a monologue? No monologues this Someone? sesh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you undermine the orders of your superiors or use the assignment for personal interests? I mean, probably would be against orders to <laughs> damage other company property. I don't know how you would interpret that. I, I won't <laughs> say no to it. I yeah. have my own things I'm doing. I just have yet to execute them because I keep Zeph keeps messing up <laughs> the basic shit. I love it. Well, <laughs> I think the way you're framing that made sense too, because you mentioned you're like, well, this is gonna, you know, getting caught is gonna get in the way of his own agenda here. So that seems All appropriate. Right, I'll take it. Um Dr. Quick, did you go out of your way to connect with the local community? I think so, with Patricia. I did help her with her cats. I don't think I was vulnerable with anyone in the present day, though, sadly. Fair enough. Might have to next session, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then, Bastion, did you deliver a monologue about any of those subjects? Uh, no, I did not this session. I feel like you did. Um, you are connecting with the local community here. Yeah, I think so. I I I, I wasn't sure I'd hit that, but then I thought actually no, going going back out into the woods with to to yeah look for this missing person probably counts here, and that's cool for sure. Nice. Um, let's go to stars and wishes then. Um, stars as always to all the verses. Um, I really appreciate Meriwether. Um, L, your dialogue with your mother it just, you're, you're doing the whole scene so beautifully it was really moving as always um love dr quick's moments with his brother um from just that wild speaking into this box but then also how you narrated it in the verse um continuing to get that story is really really cool um i love the scene with zeph uh that kind of trope of like the kids parents are fighting in the background so they turn to something else it was like the perfect scene to give us that glimpse into your history um and um yeah I, I really continue to appreciate with the karen maiden and bastion here um just like how how perfectly these themes are kind of lining up of being on this lonely road but then being lured to some other lonely place and um it's cool to see um like how you're making it work uh david to be like investigating this by yourself it doesn't seem like it seems very appropriate for your character, so that's kind of cool to see. Um, wishes for me, I think, is just um, continuing to get a little bit more comfortable with juggling scenes and assignments. Um, when everyone's separated, it's a little tricky, and so I'm just just want to keep keep uh, building on the the GM skills there to make it a little more smooth if I can. Other than that, just wishing to see where all these cliffhangers um, go next because it's all super fun. Stars to every, I mean, I said it in the chat, I'll say it again. Uh, Y'all's verses get me. Oh my gosh. Like they're always so like emotionally charged in such a delicious way. And it is just, it's, it's poetry. It's it. I feel like you all write them out beforehand like and if you do that's amazing oh my god and if you don't also amazing because it's just fabulous it's it's a really delicious character study every time i'm a sucker for character studies and everyone's writing these absolutely fascinating people and i really love it i really really do and i mean specific stars i love meriwether still i, I said it last session i'll say it again. i love you going just completely 
like all out into this family like that is essentially they're kind of the antagonists of the assignment but like her interactions with them have made me like like them and root for them it's it, that's also a star for gabriel for making them weirdly likable like wow Definitely monster monster sympathizers around here i can't argue with um yeah. comments in the chat about that <laughs> We're all monster sympathizers here, yeah. for sure. And I thought, yeah, I really love Meriwether's entire approach to this. It's really fascinating. And her her backstory, I want to know more now. Oh, my gosh. I loved her mom. Like, that was such a fun, like, oh, she comes from, like, a family like this. Absolutely delightful. Um, John, I really liked there, there, that you, when you were, like, playing Eric as Dr. Quick, you, I don't know if you did this on purpose, but you changed your tone of voice a little. It was like you were doing like a different character and it was really interesting and I really liked it. And yeah, <laughs> sure on purpose, definitely. I, I felt it, I saw it and I know other people will see it. I, I really felt it was, it was really a softer version of, of Dr. Quick. And I liked that immediately you were like, I can't be Eric. Like, I can't pretend to be Eric. It, that was so off the cuff. And it was very indicative of this delicious mystery that we got going on with these twins. What's going on? Oh, my God. Ah, I love it. I love it. I love it. That's so fun. I love, I love that. And Bastion, I love that you have your brother's skull and you really, really went hard with that. That was so cool. Like you took an item from first sesh and you made it into like a deeply fascinating verse. And the fact that you were both miss, I was like, oh, you both were? Oh, that's so good. What happened when you were missing? I'm, I'm absolutely like enthralled with y'all's backstories. Yeah, and Gabriel, I love your NPCs. It's really, I was really excited to see you do the NPCs that I wrote because I've never seen someone do that and like it's delightful it's so delightful and your all your NPCs are always so delightful and you always make me like them a lot and they're all very different people but like I'm always like it's such a harsh world but they are so authentic the way you play them that they feel very like genuinely human and I love it I so I'm I'm just very excited to see where all these cliffhangers go too. I'm excited to hear more backstory. I'm always excited about stuff though. Just a, so. a credit to the writing on that too, though. I think that's that's what's fun is like um, the way these scenarios are written in these kind of games is like you only have a couple lines to convey the character, and um, that's fun. Yeah, I, I I feel like we're very aligned in how we want to like have that humanity come through the rest of the weirdness. So like, yeah, it's it's in your writing too for sure. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, stars around um, another another really great session. Um, Star is great to have uh, great to have Doctor Quick back just in general. But um, yeah, I I loved the um, the seeing sort of um, well, I suppose the 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 uh, different facets of Eric coming through in the 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 um, in the verse in in sort of. Um, Dr. Quick's dealings with um uh, with Patricia and, and also in the box. I'm I'm interested to see what's going on in there. Um uh so uh, <laughs> that that was really cool. Um I um I really liked um the yeah the 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 sort of um The decision making, I think, um, uh, be with the with with like where you where you went with with Zephyr, there was really cool. I like that. I, I like yeah, <laughs> sort of like oh, yeah, I, I need to get out of here. And yeah, it seems like Meriwether's uh, Meriwether's fine. It's all going to be good. Uh, I, I I love that that sort of um, uh, that 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 decision to make because it's it's um, it's it's always fun when you sort of see yeah the the sort of splitting up and splitting off going on and um, the. Um, the, again, the, just the, the it's, it's great this stance to see the the interactions between um, between Doctor Quick and Zeph um, was was really cool. Um, I loved as well. Um, yeah, um, 
uh, the, this, I, I really liked seeing um, Merriweather kind of playing into that, um, actually sort of showing the the effects of like the situation that she's been in, rather than kind of being, you know, stoic and and um, and so on. So it was really, I thought, I thought you showed that kind of, um, like, yeah, vulnerability really, really effectively. Yeah, Elle, that was great. Um, and yeah, Gabriel, kind of what, what we we're just saying about, but um, I loved. I mean, I you know I've really enjoyed like the um, the um, I'm blanking on the name of the family, but the family and 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 skeletons. some of the other mm-hmm. skeletons that's it and w- that we've seen so far. But it was really uh, it was really cool this session as well, just seeing some like really down to earth, normal, friendly people showing up as well. It's like yeah, like I said, it really is nice to see that sort of contrast. It's uh, it's really cool. So yeah. Um, no, great session, everyone. Thank you. I thank you very much. It's always bad when you go like third because you're just repeating what everyone else has said. But yeah, I really loved the the verses all in a row. Each one felt so different, so unique, so interesting. Uh, the intrigue with with Zeph in the rain with Bastion and his skull, which, like B said, is just so fantastic. Um, and then I love I loved uh, just like B said the bit with Merryweather and her mother. Her mother with a caftan and a drink in her hand makes me think of like the the mother from Bojack Horseman. Similarly, with like a child who's trying to get into acting. Um, yeah, really, really loved that. It was also quite fun coming back after a week. And, you know, we left Merriweather at basically the Texas Chainsaw Massacre house. And I return and she's basically like, she's in with them. She's, you know, now a beloved family member. So that was just a hilarious uh, delayed punchline to come back to. Um Gabriel, one like specific star. I I loved the ro- failed role zo- result of basically Zeph being run out of town. Um, I like because we we've been doing like I've been trying a few sessions, and of course you always want to escalate and escalate and escalate. But actually, sometimes it's such like a a cool twist to basically have no choice but to rethink your tactics and flee and see how that moves the narrative on. So I really love that. Um, and I a, a star and a wish. I, I really loved that, partly because Zeph got to come and hang out with Dr. Quick. And it, it is so fun doing the kind of bumbling buddy cop thing and trying to work together and not doing very well and having someone to bounce off. So yeah, love that and can't wait to do more of it. It's very fun to be a bumbling buddy cop with you. Mm-hmm. Just a note. <laughs> yeah, stars to, to Zeph's uh, just ineptitude, but like because of roles mostly because it, it, it keep thinking like no 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 zeph's got skills you can do whatever and it's like oh nope here we go <laughs> thoroughly enjoying it yeah uh yeah i'm gonna try not to repeat anything um i will shout out zeph's verse um in particular just because i think it's the first one we heard from from him isn't it yeah i was I like so, so. hype. <laughs> Um, it was fantastic. I love getting that little glimpse of, of Zeph's childhood. Um, and I, I think it was a it was interesting the the contrast between the way that he like dealt with that problem in a situation that he didn't have much power in as a kid and like how he deals with problems now, which is like basically just running away from them. <laughs> so I thought that was a really great uh great little glimpse into his psyche. Um, I also really enjoyed the banter between uh, Seth and the doctor about uh, their their pseudonyms going into the <laughs> the facility. That was super fun. Um, for Dr. Quick, yeah, I'm super intrigued by the weird trunk and his brother. Um, also, I'm obsessed with Big Herb. I can't stop thinking about Big Herb. Um, I'm a follower of Big Herb now. <laughs> and yeah, it's been really fascinating for David. Um, it's been really fascinating to watch Bastian um, interact with the Bower Companion. It feels like the most Bastian mm-hmm. assignment that could possibly exist. <laughs> so it's just, it's so great to see you like just tackling that solo. Because um, I think thematically the way you're using the assignment to reveal more of Bastian is really uh, well done and really beautiful. Um, and for Gabriel, I think he did a great job keeping things moving. I know it feels like overwhelming sometimes as a keeper, but I think um, 
he did a really great great work with spotlight management um and in terms of scenes or images i really loved uh the dusk mother coming to feed her nestlings with a bunch of meat from above uh so thank you for that um and for wishes I would love to do a journey scene or two because I'm really full up on conditions. <laughs> um, yeah. And it's been a couple sessions, I think, since Meriwether got to really interact with the other custodians. So maybe I'll go meet up with, with Bastion next session or something. Yeah, absolutely. It's a nice built in um, reason to need to travel and switch up, <clears throat> you know, who's where just to like get a breather. So absolutely. Any other stars or wishes? Covered a lot. Um, loved the session. A lot of fun. Really enjoyed it. And uh, really just enjoy everyone's contribution so much. Uh, it's a delight playing with you all. So um, we'll catch you next time. Continue the recording then.